Hey there, back in the shop today's tip is not so much a tip, it's kind of a test. We hear an awful lot of conversation about whether, what is the right way to uh, prepare your wood for a finish. Uh, we, talk, we get to hear about sanding, which is one way. Question is, does that muddy the grain? Does it bend over the fibers so it doesn't take a stain well? I hear card scrapers all the time. Not a bad option, cuts it off more cleanly, but it's not really cutting, is it? So why not use a hand plane? So we're gonna do each of these finishes on each of these boards, or at least these surface preparations. Then I'm gonna tape them off down the center, and we're gonna come back with a, a gel stain. Wait, I got it right. Penetrating stain and a gel stain. One will soak into the grain more, one will lay more on the top, and we'll get to take a look at which one's got the best finish look. Um, but before we do that, I wanna also say, don't just take a board and run it through the planer and say, yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, because once you put the stain on it, you're gonna see all the planer marks that are there. So I'm gonna leave the back side of this one untouched, and we'll put some stain on that and take a look at it too. Okay, so there's our three boards. We've got sanding, scraping, and planing. The first thing you should notice is, since we're working with hardwoods, it really doesn't matter whether they're using a gel stain or that penetrating stain. They pretty much look about the same from front to back, which is the difference of the boards. So with a hardwood like this, with oak, it really doesn't matter because it's not gonna penetrate that deep anyways. If you're using pine or a softer wood, then you're probably gonna look at a big difference between a penetrating and a gel stain, and you wanna do a test board. Now for the sanding, you can see the difference between the sanding board and the scraped board. This has a lighter finish to it. The grain isn't as prominent. That's because the fibers are roughed up to the point where it's not, the stain isn't penetrating down into those fibers as much. So you get sort of an even, a more even look, a lighter look. You don't have a whole lot of depth to it perhaps, um, but maybe that's okay. Maybe that's the look you're looking for and sanding looks fine. We're still getting some of the grain, but it's not very defined. With the scraped board, you get to see a lot more of that figure. And if you're working with a figured wood, that's a really good thing because you want to see those grain lines pop out. Um, there's some nice chatoyance going on in there uh, that you can see hopefully with the camera, but if not, uh, the scraped board does help that pop up a little bit more and doesn't leave it as, little, as muddy. Now, the planed board, basically means you shouldn't plane it. Uh, <laughs> with a figured wood like this, it was just tearing up with cross directions and that sort of a thing. That's a preparation stage, and honestly, it made it so inconsistent across it, in most cases, it couldn't really be a good form. That would be a first step, not a second step or third step in the process. Planing, we're gonna call that a no. Um, and by the way, our other side, where we've got our didn't do anything to it, well, I can see all the, tr the track marks from the plane. If there's nicks in the knives, that's still there. This is for outdoor furniture that you really don't care about. Without any kind of a surface preparation, you can do that, but it's not my recommendation. So wood finishing is a pretty big topic, as you might imagine, and surface preparation is just touching the concept. We've talked about a couple of things here that hopefully will dispel some of your questions about what's the right way to sur surface prep. But if you've still got questions, we've tagged a couple of uh, other products on finishing and surface preparation at the end of this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.